There's a live Zoom meeting today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be, even if it's never be live, we have to be live. Yeah. 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 We have a move a motion moved by Lynn and seconded by Bill with the agenda for the special council meeting held April 26, 2023, to be approved as presented. Are there any amendments? No. Okay, so as presented. All those in favor. Motion's carried. Any disclosure pecuniary interest in general nature thereof of any item on today's agenda by any member of council? Seeing none, we will note that. Staff report. So our first is a fire master plan review of recommendations. Chris, take it away. All right, thank you. Um, so as you know, we did complete the fire master plan uh, back a, a number of weeks ago. Uh, there was 23 recommendations that came through from that. Um, and uh, yep. And uh, we're going to just do a high level of of the, the operational ones, and then there's a couple items there that the council will probably want to have uh, a look at. Um, so I'm just going to go through them real quickly right now. So the fire master plan implementation. So the update will need to be done to the bylaw. Um, any formal agreements that we have, uh, automatic aid or, or otherwise, or um, mutual aid agreements will have to be completed. Um, we're saying short term, um, it may be take a little longer than we expect. Uh, formalize a joint health and safety committee. We have completed that. Uh, terms of reference have also been done. Um, the officer development program that meets all the requirements listed in the Ontario Health and Safety Act. Uh, we are working on that. It's ongoing. Um, and the health and wellness component to add to the training program for the recruits, that's the orientation. We have we have that in place as well. Uh, report on funding needed to upgrade the department's current radio communication system. Big star beside that one. Uh, we're going to have to talk about that one. Uh, SWOT analysis is basically talking about strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities uh, within the department. So, uh, Lumex group went to all the firefighters to get feedback on what they thought the things that could be improved. Um, I would look at those. They're mostly operational. They're all operational. So I am dealing with those. They're, that's ongoing. Um, training schedule has been completed. Uh, training committee has also been completed. So with the health and safety committee, the training committee also conducts that, that meeting at the same time to, to reduce the number of evenings. Uh, third party certification did training. Did you want to ask questions as we go through these? Sure. Or... Sure. Oh, if you want, I'm just going to highlight that if we've got questions after, you want to do back, it now? Yeah, okay, yeah. that's okay. Okay with that. Okay. Uh, training committee, as, as I said, we've completed support uh, third party certification, which is ongoing. We're doing that now. Uh, consulting with members regarding training nights and looking at changing the nights. Uh, we have discussed that lightly. Um, we're still working on whether we're going to do that or not. We're not sure yet as a, as a, as a senior staff. Uh, baseline for department's response standards. Uh, we're, we're looking at that. That's ongoing. Uh, review the department's training records and level of specialized services and develop a training program that has been done. Um, Enhance the records management system that is in place. We had that done last year. Uh, estimate costs for with replacing the Arden Fire Station with the new station that is ongoing at this time. There's still some more research I'm doing on that. Uh, sharing of a fire prevention officer. That'll be something that we'll have to talk about with since we have the uh, posting for the deputy chief. Mm -hmm. uh, development and implement pre-planning program for high-risk occupancies. Operational issue again, but uh, that is uh, being done. We're we're getting something set up for that. So, in other words, our nursing homes, our schools, uh, anywhere where we identify high risk in the, in the community, that's where we pre, pre plan for that. And every okay. number of blue homes, blue homes, yeah, they're called vulnerable. Right. Yeah. Uh, update the emergency response plan based on the incident management system, which is being chaired, I think, by Mr. Middleton, but I'm not sure. 
No way. What am I doing? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So those are the things that uh, we're talking about. If there's any questions on any of those, Philip, you're pathway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. Tell us which number. Uh, so there's a couple, but I think you're going to go back and talk about the the communication system. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, so then I also highlighted on row 12 or number eight, uh, develop a training schedule. No, sorry, nine, develop a training committee. So I had a question, if we're hiring a full-time deputy that's going to be looking after training, do you need a training committee then as well? Because yes. it sounds like we're adding, it's just, it's the cost, right? Because if you're expecting the firefighters to make that committee up, but we're actually, actually hiring a full-time person to look after that training, we're, we're increasing our costs, so. This recommendation came in before we decided to hire a full time mm -hmm. right. deputy chief. Mm -hmm. So, there's to answer to, to that, to, to the mayor, to Councillor Smith, it's not really an increase in cost, it's more of formalizing structure. So, what it, what it does is that the, the deputy chief will have the schedule that's been created and, and they may adjust it, but through that, then the committee, which will be made of the district chiefs and maybe some captains. We'll sit down and formulate and finalize that and that'll happen every year it's not like they're going to meet every month and, and go through it it's going to be a one-time deal that okay because that's that's been my concern right yeah. if, if we start delegating all these more tasks to the firefighters then we're obviously going to be paying these volunteers more by the hour for their you know what they're coming and doing because senior staff that'll be doing that it's not we're all still, the firefighters so it's but we're still paying them by the hour to come and do either training or well it, meetings or it would be done on a health when we do the health and safety training or meeting as well. So that has to happen. Um, so what would happen is the the, the program and the the schedule will be set up with the uh, with the senior officers, and then that probably would maybe meet every quarterly at, at the most, maybe not even that. So that's that's how that would work, just to stay on task. So what the what the challenge is right now is or or was it's it's getting better now. Everybody was training differently on different on the training nights. So there was no consistency on the training. So equipment was being misplaced in different places on the trucks. Uh, when we had a, a large call, uh, boots to the ground, the tasks weren't being carried out properly because nobody was identifying what should be done at the certain time when you get there. So these are things that need to be structured and put in place. And with our RIP program, our rapid uh, response program, all those things that have to be in place. So that's that's sort of where we're going. Instead of everybody freelancing and not getting anything done, we're having to have structure and how we do things, and that's what the training program is going to bring. And the deputy will help with all that stuff yeah, for sure. We'll hold yeah, all that that's, together. That's, that's the whole idea, that's right? Fun. And then you've got yeah. your people that are still coming on board that we want to certify. So we're going to have to be talking about that as we go along too. So there's going to be people that are maybe going to be wanting to take courses. So there's going to have to be arrangements to do it to schedule that with fire marshal's offices. So, so, so that goes into step nine that or the nine develop it no, no, sorry ten ten, ten, ten yeah, yeah. Yeah. certified third training party. program yeah. Yeah. with third parties so my understanding was when we agreed that we we're going to hire a full-time deputy chief correct that that training was going to be done through the deputy yeah. chief mm -hmm. and yeah. we wouldn't have to rely on third parties yeah. anymore and, and we're looking at somebody that has the qualifications that can do that to to, to do a training okay. so that's so is that number 10 then kind of redundant it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if we hire the right person we will hire the right that's, person that's got the training, right? That's the correct. ability to do that. Otherwise, yeah. they're going to have to be trained. And a significant cost savings. Could, could, could you go put 10 on, please? Yeah. Then it supports third party certification no. training program. Uh, Perfect. The top line is number 10. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Is it glare? Yeah. So that's this one. That's number 10 sure. different than, oh, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's like the one that's trying to read the paper. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> that's that's the right colors if you want. Doesn't help. It's the no. So that's that's See? what number two. So it, you're right. I mean, that's going to, to put that into yeah. place so that we, we've got our, our training in place to, and we're going to reduce our costs by doing it in-house. That's right. Well, it, more, when we talked about it, it was going to be more of a wash. And we're hiring yeah. a full-time deputy chief Correct. and mm -hmm. walking mm -hmm. it with the, the fact that we're not sending people for training. People, yeah, people training. for yeah. training. Yeah. Absolutely. 
So really, yeah, you're right. That would be redundant. So are you basically. saying, Philip, that that doesn't need to be there? Or well, that's that's yeah. what I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. So yeah. we can take that out. Well, yeah. or we can just mark it's done. it as done. Yeah, I've got them marked completed. They weren't on this spreadsheet. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Nikki. Okay. On the health and wellness component, I was just wondering, um, should this not be offered like on a yearly basis to the whole department? Um, when you think about mental health being so important these days, um, not just you have it in here to uh, add it to the new training for new recruits. Mm -hmm. um, I think that health and wellness should be a yearly thing that is uh, offered to the whole department. It, it's answered through Mayor to uh, Councillor Gowdy. Yes, it is um, through our BFIS program. Um, we do have that. BFSSI, thank you. Volunteer firefighters. Uh, um, it is it is offered, and that's through our our, our health and dental program as well, too, right? So we don't have the bias. It's all combined in that in that program. Well, I think that my my I guess my question is, uh, some of the firefighters might not take up the benefits part of that benefit, and if we want to keep them healthy and well, we do a yearly resilience program. Yes. Yeah, we can do that for sure. And then it, it might help with turnover. Keeping them healthy and it's often a debrief though if there is a major um, incident event. where yeah. say somebody dies there's a, a debrief after that for and sure people specifically are offered help if we whenever we have a, a significant event I usually follow up with the district chief that's in charge of the, that situation and I say it's everybody okay and, and if there, there isn't a problem then I certainly look after. We've had a couple of incidents that we've had to deal with that. So, and I have a, a, a counselor out of Ottawa that deals especially with that stuff that I've used in the past. So, okay, yeah. good. Um, my next one is we talked when you did the original presentation in February about the SWOT analysis and that it's an ongoing um, analysis. So, how often will you be redoing the SWOT analysis? Yearly, by every two years or so? Oh, no, but. Probably be every year. I mean, if I need to, if there's an, if something that comes up though that's serious enough that we would if we would address it right away. But um, that's that's the whole idea where we're going with with the way I operate is if there's an issue with any of the firefighters, they go to their district chiefs, and then that comes back to me, and then we deal with it right away. In our monthly meetings, with their chiefs' meetings, we'll we'll talk about that at roundtable. Um, Identifying all our strengths. So we'll ask the training committee question for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and he did the third party one for me. <laughs> um, what did I write there? Is it too dark? Can you not see? <laughs> I wrote really small. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it, my, my other one was under number four under training, um, which doesn't match the number of the spreadsheet, but uh, offering um, different trainings on other nights to get everybody involved in um, yeah. offset the Saturdays that we mentioned yesterday. Yes. Yeah, so what, what that was to try and do was the suggestion was um, if we didn't have everybody's training on the same night, that if somebody missed the training night on the Tuesday, that if there was one on the Thursday. And, uh, right now, I that we haven't been too successful with that. Everybody's sort of stuck on the Tuesday. So okay. it might change in the future. Um, and then your baseline for the department's response standards. Um, with the question with the reports not coming out to us all clearly every month and that how is your data pure so you have the right answers on it and you have um the other part of it is you have Sherbert Lake on call to answer every call going out like a when calls come in in other parts of the township they are also called out for those calls so it's kind of hard um to understand how uh you can say where where the need is in certain areas when Sherbert Lake's responding to everything. Does that make sense to you? Right. So okay. to answer the first part. So, I mean, so what we've discovered, and, and this came up with Committee of Adjustment back a while ago as well, um, the entire report, if you click on the PDF link in the agenda package, the entire report is correct. It's the HTML link that, I don't know, it's some kind of a software thing where the, the system's not reading the document correctly. Um, I also noticed in one of my reports last night, there was a blue arrow on my map and it didn't show up. So it's, I, I don't know if there's any way to fix that. Um, 
I think going to the PDF version is probably the best way to go to to get the full report. I mean, when we notice, like we'll try to keep an eye out and notice if reports aren't looking proper, but um, I, so I don't know there, what, but just it was there, HTML. but in the PDF version, the HTML one somehow didn't work. Yeah. Didn't work. And that happened, I think, with, uh, and we thought originally with, with Committee of Adjustment that it was because it was a PowerPoint presentation, but this wasn't a PowerPoint. So it's obviously a um, IT type issue. Yeah. yeah. And my phone was going off a lot. There. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, and to the second part of that is, so when we, when we, before, say for an MVC in, um, in the Mountain Grove area, they didn't have the equipment to deal with an NBC for a person trapped in a vehicle. It was only here in Charlotte, right? So they were running that all the time. Sometimes during the day, there's not enough staff. We will still run two stations to that call. I haven't changed that as of yet. Um, I vote, I've told the district chiefs that are, or whoever's in command that if you don't require that second station to respond, please get on the air and notify the station that they can stand down. But for the most part, we've been we've been using two stations. Yes, Charlotte Lake goes a lot because they've got they have the uh, the jaws of life, if you want to call that the extrication equipment. Uh, Mountain Grove now has has that equipment as well. So we're we've got ourselves covered for that. And in PARM, they they actually the association purchased a set that were their use set from Coorth the Lakes that we're actually getting uh, serviced and tested for for them to use. So we'll be well equipped for that. As far as structure fires, still going to use anybody that's available, all four stations if I have to. So, okay, okay, and that shows up on our our reports. Okay, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm not going to do that, I promise. <laughs> um, and then I noticed that we're not talking about the Piccadilly station tonight or anything, so I will leave my comment on that one. Piccadilly doesn't have a station. Piccadilly has a building with a vehicle in it. Substation. <laughs> no, no it's not even called the substation. Well, it was always so, It's an operational <laughs> issue at this point, but it's it's something we're looking at very seriously, yeah. and we're going to come back with something for council. Yeah. Yeah. Separately. Yeah. And I think I'm good, believe it or not. <laughs> there you go. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I lied. I'm sorry. <laughs> Under the organizational structure. Right. What number is that? Uh, sorry, plan. It's part of the plan. It's right here. Oh, oh, okay. sorry. Not, not here. Uh, <laughs> under, well, I'm a little concerned about the number that you only want to keep 13 in Parham. You want to get rid of the vehicle in the south and only keep 13 firefighters in Parham. Um, since COVID has hit, the highest growth in the township has been in that district. And the number is rising. Yeah. Um, I think that's not what we want to keep it at. That's where we're at now. Okay. We well, were only at, when I came here, I think we were at about eight. So okay. we come up. Well, five. according to your thing, you have 15 for Arden, 15 right. for Mount Grove, 13 for Parham, and 25 in Charlotte. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what our current staffing levels are now. That's why we use that. It's not but a maximum. It's, it's not a, so what we were doing is identifying who how many people we had in each station but it was actually the structure they organized so we didn't they didn't have district chiefs again when i came here they were removed mm -hmm. so i put them back in place so we've got my the fire chief well cao fire chief then you've got your admin assistant you've got training and fire prevention then you've got your four district chief well three district chiefs right now hopefully if we get our new staffed up enough we're going to have a fourth district chief and then we've got our our four stations equipped that way so okay. right right now we're just with three district chiefs, right? Yeah, because this says a this is our proposed organizational structure. Right, as we stand now, that it'll probably improve as I get more people. The proposed means us sorry to keep it that that means what we want to do. What we, we want, want to do. Yeah. We want more people definitely. Yeah. So and I think the structure is the, the, the flow chart. The, 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 the flow chart. Yeah, don't let the numbers of staffing are what you would like to grow but that's where the numbers of staffing are now the, the box is in oh, well then you should say that you should say number. proposed okay proposed and put the numbers in well i what i wanted to do is identify that our structure we didn't have that structure 
we didn't have three good crew chiefs. We didn't have the captains, and we didn't have the department chiefs. So we're we're putting that in place, and this is what is, is something that we want council to look at to approve. Now the numbers are just there because that's the current numbers that are staffed in the stations. But the proposal is actually the structure, the layout of the the boxes. So really, then, if you eliminate it, the number of firefighters at each station that's on this chart, right. you eliminate the problem. Because yeah. if you could get. <laughs> 30 in Parham, you take 30. Sure. You take 50 in Charlotte Lake, you take whatever, but right. you're going to have a chief, right. two captains, correct, then firefighters. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. So just eliminate the number of firefighters and this issues. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay, Sorry. now I'm done. All right. <laughs> My apologies for the confusion. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Anything that jumps off the page? Okay, so yeah, so I I talked uh, lightly about the communication system with council uh, um, a couple months ago or a month ago. Um, so what the situation is is that our licensing right now we are paying for a license that we don't have with Industry Canada. So what that means is that where our system is not kosher to, to industry Canada standards. Also, where our, our equipment is, our filters and all our main uh, dispatching equipment is at a tower on number seven that's, that's owned while well, it's being operated by a Northern uh, Frontline okay. telephone, telephone Company. Mm -hmm. um, we're not paying any for any services there or any rental. Um, so <clears throat> when I found that out, through this company, they uh, they suggested that we better look at you know our system. Now the reason I got them involved was because of the coverage. If you remember when we were on the bus ride, and I said we don't have any coverage in certain areas with our phones or the radios. That's what brought all this about. So they said, you know, really your system is very outdated um, as well. And he's right that we can't get parts for our radios in our in our system that we have now. Um, the tower there is is adequate to work with us. I did send an agreement to the company that owns or leases the tower. Um, I haven't heard back from them. It may be a zero uh, cost or there may be a fee for it. We don't know yet. So it'd be a monthly fee of like maybe five, six hundred dollars a month, maybe no, maybe less, um, which is very reasonable. However, the, the system to, to have it in place, we approved in budget was, was going to be around 78,000 a year. It's turned out it's more it's more than we expected. So we're looking at a lease. If we were doing a monthly, it'd be 10,000 a month for a lease. If we were to buy it outright, it'd be 480,000. So the reason being that you need a tower in far end and that tower is about $75,000. The other problem that we have with our system right now is that we have a single simulcast system. So what that means, without getting too technical, is when Hickston dispatch dispatches a set of uh, the page it out, firefighters are coming to the hall or they're on their portable radios. So everything's coming in on one one voice or one not one voice, but two voices on one channel. So you're getting everybody garbled up. So trucks are, people are responding to the call. They're on the air. At the same time, the page is still going out. So you're hearing two things at once on the one channel. Then when the first responder or first truck gets to the scene, they're trying to give an update. Now you've got three, or maybe you'll have four people on one channel, all talking at the same time. And it's it's very hard to hear. It's very hard to listen. So what what really needs to happen is we have a a, a simulcast paging system, which is sixty thousand dollars, and then we have our radio frequency system, which is another sixty thousand. So that when the guys the the firefighters are leaving the station, they're on a separate channel than the paging system. So that when they get to the call, they can give an update, and there's no cross crossover of of the voices. Um, it's, it's, it can be awkward at times. Um, it's not the end of the world. I mean, a medical call, it's fairly straightforward. Other than the fact 
fellows are on their radios, they may have a radio at home with them. They're on the air going, you know, going to the station or going to the call and they're giving an update in the meanwhile the, the vehicle's leaving the station and they're they're crossing over each other. Um, so that's that's part of the problem that we have. Um, radio. The radio, the radios themselves and our equipment is very outdated and when needs to be replaced. I think I remember you telling you that they took some used radios from Greater Napa and actually that were already 10 or 15 years old. So I can't even get batteries for them now. So it's it is a problem. It's it's a, an expensive problem. So will the Rogers Towers <laughs> to be installed be of any help? They would if we paid for it, but I, I mean, they they would be considerably more money. So what what has to happen is that we unless have, they make a deal with municipalities because well, they're good corporate citizens who right. want to help the rural communities. Right. <laughs> I mean, anything's possible. I guess we could approach them. It's just that um, you have to have battery backup on the system. The filters, there's the filters, and then the frequencies that are put into the filters. And I don't know all the technical stuff, but I, you know, there's a fair bit that has to be in that housed in that building that reaches up to that tower. Because okay. where's the closest one? There's one in Godfrey, is there not? That just went up? Yeah, yeah or somewhere around there. Up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact location, right. but yeah. John Cloud's so, one. Yeah. So our okay. Our uh, the report that I have, and I'm I'm going to share this with council in the next meeting or yeah. whenever the mayor sees fit that we do that. Uh, it shows the coverage that we will get with this new system. All that green is all coverage for us. We don't have near that right now. We're not even close. No, because I've identified in the gap analysis. Yeah. Oh, we had a lot of gaps. This this is fixing the problem for you forever. Um, and a half a million dollars. I <laughs> so, well, oh yeah. I know. I I agree. I'm not. And that's just the upfront cost. They're still licensing, right? Like you still got your your mm -hmm. licensing, which isn't it really expensive, <laughs> and and the lease of months is you know for the tower. Mm -hmm. um, the other tower we would own, the one that we'd mm -hmm. be in. Parham is where they say the other tower has to be mm -hmm. in order to get the proper coverage. The county did a big um, consultant backed up an hour ten years ago. Two point two million dollars. Yeah, to identify because we had a lot of gaps. Us and North Frontenac, yeah. Has Chris seen that? Like, are there any recommendations in there that we could look at now that we could take a look at? It this company did that before. Oh, yeah, yeah, they oh, did yeah. the gap. So I did ask if it would save any costs by having all three North, South, and Central involved in this, and it won't change anything for us because a lot of it's equipment for us personally. So it's there's no cost savings there. Yeah, because I have the gap analysis. I find it there. Chris, does it? Need to be all done at once, like you said. Right now, we're on a. Right now, I'm looking for a used tower, so I'm hoping I can save some money there. Um, it's a hundred. It has to be at least 130 feet the tower, so it brings in a crane and so on. That's the problem there. Um, I, I mean, if we if we took away the the aging piece, the sixty thousand, we'd still have the same problem we have now. We just all know that we obviously didn't budget half a million dollars, no. so. Yeah. <laughs> if we can module it out and over time get easier the system that you want mm -hmm. and do what we can with what we're what we've already put yeah, i thought about that i didn't know what... that's too bad i've got a good hundred footer at home you could have had yeah it's a ham radio max oh well yeah. and so it's a yeah. it's a proper one proper. i have a high hill they say this <laughs> one, the one <laughs> yeah when i pick a deli they said it wouldn't take the weight with the dishes and the oh. antenna and everything. That was the problem I had because they said it's not high enough because I asked if that would be good enough. So on seven, Pellas decommissioned two of their towers just past the urban turn. I'm not sure if they're still there or not. Is that something you could buy from a company that's not using them anymore because they went a different direction? I don't I, Do you know because it would be a tower that you need. It's exactly what you would need yeah, for a tower. I don't know how big they are. They probably just as much dismantle and movement. Mm -hmm. I don't know how big they are. Mm -hmm. It's it's so though it, I guess there was an arrangement made um, prior to me coming here that they with Northern uh, Frontenac Telephone to go up to the site on number seven and just put the equipment in there and hope that it's okay. So I'm kind of like we're know, still hoping it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I as late as last night I asked um, a representative from Northern. Uh, on that telephone if there was 
any word back, but they haven't heard anything yet. So on the agreement. Mm -hmm. So that's a stay tuned kind of. I'll see if we can piecemeal it to, and, and if we can try doing something like that, uh, maybe we can look at it that way. Okay. Uh, and and what like what if we just leave it status quo? Like obviously it's working. We go yep. to calls. We it's, accomplish things. We put out fires. It's working to its capabilities. I right. under I understand that, right. but but we've got a we have a liability with the gaps, right? So that's one thing we got to think about. That's a health safety issue, mm -hmm. right? So we can't leave guys out there with no communication, right? So. We've got a lot of areas that we don't don't but have coverage. Is there some kind of way we can do this through like iPhones or something? Because like you seem to get a lot better with what phones? Like, like through a phone? Like like no. So that's you. I don't think you were on the bus tour because your back was. Mm -hmm. So when we were going up Zealand, I had no service on my phone. Mm -hmm. Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said to uh, Jamie Burdell at that time, I said. Do we have any radio coverage here? He says, no, we don't. And I, I should have brought a portable with me to try, but I've done since then. I've gone with the via, my car and I can't, there's nothing there. It's, I guess it's the terrain and the rocks. It's and the, the rock. It we, they said that on the account. We already subscribe to some kind of service that firefighters use their cell phones for because they get calls on their cell phones. So that's a, that's a different set. A relay or something? That's, that's our Ooh, blue and audio and that's our app. Yeah. It's an app. It's app. So if we don't have cover, if we don't have a signal on our phone, that won't work. Right. That's how that works. I'm not a screen, I'm just saying that's oh, another yeah. service for oh, yeah. it works for well. It. Yeah. yeah. Who's, yeah. Responding who's responding to call or something? Who's, Who, responding? who's responding? So that's a that's a feature that's good for us because it can tell us who's coming to the call because the guys can put it into their phones and say that, you know, I'm responding to the call. Or if there's a, a message that needs to get out, we've got that as well. So we've had that. And it works for our burn permits too. That's what we use that for. So people that call in for or go to a, online for a permit, it automatically goes through that, that program and then we see who's got a permit. What do we pay for that? No, oh, sure. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's a Michael question. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I used to know that cost, but I don't know anymore because I, I am too far away from that stuff now. Mm -hmm. um, but the system, the answer to, to Council Middleton, it works, but it's not working as well as it should. Um, and with the, with the dead areas, it's a problem. We don't have our proper licensing. That's something that's being worked on right now. I'm getting that done. So we make sure we've got our, our license with Industry Canada for the frequencies. Now, having said that, Public Works is still in that same building. Yeah. We are so I'm, I'm, yeah. we got to make sure that they're up to speed as well. But it won't be, yeah. it, the cost won't be there as, as what ours is. Mm -hmm. I won't be near that. I think there's been maybe a couple thousand a year or something like that. So. We used to be licensed. We used to be licensed to all the time because I remember the bills always coming in. Yeah, from the they camp. moved the equipment to that tower, and ever since okay. then, it's oh, been, okay. yeah, it used to be over Mountain Grove or something. So. Well, we can all keep our eyes and ears out for towers that might be coming up, and certainly Cindy dealing with the crins and the tower placement. Uh, Rogers is supposed to help with cell phone coverage in those gap areas, so. Is there a contact that I can get from that? Uh, for Rogers? For Rogers. Um, I probably have some contacts. Yeah, I've, I've um, yeah. been dealing with a couple of different ones. Probably the property uh, management team would be the best. I think okay. be that information. All right. It was a guy I was dealing with up our dock. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's quite a science in terms of figuring out where this tire is being put up. And there's that other one back there. We might have that meeting. Yes. What about like the satellite phones? Um, never yeah, looked at that. And we, like, we would have a camp job up on the other side between, well, just 100 kilometers south of Moose and Ian, lived in trailers in the middle of a swamp. Yeah, it's grass. a necessary thing. That, yeah. And that's how Hydro had was sat phones, and like they were like, mm -hmm. yeah, the military used those as well, right? You know, look, I just mean they just had an option to have a few of them here yeah. are in these situations, like. Not all 25 firefighters have no. to be on the radio steady at the house fire. You need one command guy, I would think, that can report back to somebody at the office or whoever's. So 
So like, I mean, that's a huge amount. I think that's a huge amount of money for. I understand what the you're one saying. One issue with that is that so the communication, if it's down with one radio, they're all going to be yeah. on. So we we wouldn't even get a tack channel. What's called a tack operational channel. So if we don't have a signal, none of our guys can communicate with each other inside the building or outside the building, whatever the case may be. Right. So. It's a great solution to be able to communicate the dispatch, but we wouldn't be able to commun communicate internally with each other. With each other, so there's a health and safety issue again. Right? So, well, certainly more investigation is needed. Yeah. This is not a new issue. Well, some parts of it's a new issue, but yeah. we've been you know, trying to scrap radios together for years to right. keep going as best we can. So to that point, I mean, we know what Chris is looking for for a solution. I think we need to ask him to. You know, make that a multi-year project or something. No, I mean, you sat at the budget table with this. You, you know, it wasn't. Yep. It was hard to find money to do anything. So, yep. mm -hmm. uh, if we can, much. if we can try to spread it out and eventually get to what what works. Yeah. Uh, as Council Middleton said, you know, we've been living with the system we've had for years, and we've been able to to work well through it. And there's yeah. so every fire, every rural fire department is facing the same thing. I, I did put in a the same system in eastern Ontario, but it was a very flat area, and the cost back then was probably about half, and the interest rates were not where they are now for the lease. Mm -hmm. I think I paid like two hundred thousand for the same whole system. Now it was only three stations, but still, you know, flatlands, no yeah. hills, flat land, no hill rocks, in orange Rocks, side, trees, water bed, made right. hills. Yeah. <laughs> are there any grants or any programs out to help? With with communications, if it is a health and safety problem, and it and it is a huge issue in rural areas, is anybody trying to help us? Just the new gen system with the dispatching. That's all yeah. I've seen so far. Regeneration. Um, I know that like Kingston is our dispatcher, and that's another fee that we have to pay, right? So, mm -hmm. um, um, but they're they're the ones that are getting the the money for for the new generation system. So I'm, I've asked the, um, the rep I'm using at Faircom to see if there's anything out there. So he said he was going to look for us. That would be very good. So I'll keep you posted for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on the fire master plan? Info? Well, were we going to talk about the fire prevention officer? Yeah, number 16. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 16. What are we going to talk about with that one? That's the deputy that we're right. hiring? Yes. He's going to be the fire prevention officer. He will, his duty is part of it. We'll be sharing that, him, myself, and, and him will be sharing okay. that uh, through, uh, through the program. So we're going to be doing a lot more public education and going to events and so on and so forth. Uh, that's that's a big plan for us. Um, and, and students coming? Students are coming for a smoke alarm program, which is benefited by the parents and public education is as well. Um, and we hope to, uh, you know, get into the schools more and, and do things like that and go to other events as, as well. So, yeah, that'll be a big plus for us. Yeah. For sure. Okay. All right. If we don't have anything else, we have a motion moved by Lynn and seconded by Bill. Whereas council receives the final fire master plan of February 28th, 2023, for information along with the 24 recommendations. And whereas council requested that the recommendations be brought to a special meeting for discussion and further that council direct staff to bring back those recommendations <clears throat> that require for in further information, including budget implications. Any discussion? All those in favor? Barrett. We don't have the budget implications. Yes, there definitely are some budget implications <laughs> in some of those. Yeah. Okay, procedural bylaw. Who's going to lead us on? We got that. Patrick, are you going to say anything? Cindy's gone. I think you've got some. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, maybe. Um, Unless we want to bring it up on the screen. We can bring it up on the screen. What's the best way to do this? I would suggest we go through, start with the 
chart in the, the report. Okay, we're going to start with the chart in the report. Page might that be? Do you have a page? Hey, I got 42. 42 is what I got. Yeah, 42. Reading on it. Sure, I think so. Okay, I'll just follow you. All right. This is going to put it through there. And I don't think we need to look at it. So, the first is definitions of oh, the you community. Were in the uh -huh. <laughs> hmm. Is that highlighted? Is that highlighted? Is that how it follows the highlighted stuff? The stuff where where we talk about committee is something that's been highlighted in consent agenda. In in on page 42, Craig. Yeah. Pretty much all of this list are ones that have been altered, I believe. I think that's how you set it up, was it not simply? Right. Page 42, 43, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's the chart. So if we have questions inside of what's highlighted, how do you want us to deal with that? Well, do you think, you think they'll be covered in any of the ones that are on the chart? You think he's calling it a sum? Not all. Okay. Okay. Well, it, it, sorry. Okay. Go ahead. For you, Madam Mayor. It, it would be nice for me if it showed what was previous there in a color with a line through it, and then what is new in a different color. We did have that. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we like, did. Because I don't know what, what was before. We, we, I, you we, know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, it's hard. We, I'm sure you, if you're a counselor for 50 years, I'm sure you don't have this memorized that you go off the top of your head to say, oh, yeah, I know it was changed. No. But for sure. But the, the ones in this chart are ones that have been changed. Is that right, Cindy? Those are sort of the, the last items that we've flagged that rose, like that either counselors asked questions or we wanted to have a discussion on whether there were suggestions from counselors and, and some sort of substantial changes from staff as well that we wanted to make sure that council was in agreement before we okay. move forward. Um, we had various versions of the track changed document, but as we went through and, it, and yeah. sort of modified it, we accepted those and moved on because otherwise it would have been yeah, it would have been pages. illegible by the time. Um, I don't know. Let me just see if this version. Uh, so, has... so what we have in the chart are the ones that we flagged to talk about more and staff have, I think, and staff. That from the staff perspective, that's what we're looking direction on. But the, I mean, we can certainly there whatever questions. So let's start or with the chart, and then any extras that aren't on the chart, we'll talk about at your at, at the end. How's that? So definitions. This will include most of our committees, regardless of the number of committee members who are members of council. It will not include subcommittees established under any of the main committees. And the updated committees have now been categorized, and staff are working on bringing terms of reference to council for approval. That we remember talking about that. All about committees. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next one was definitions of consent agenda. Uh, this will allow council to approve a group of items with one resolution. The county does this. It's a little awkward, but it does speed the meeting up. Because basically, you've got, um, for instance, uh, rec committees. We do a separate motion for each rec committee where we could list all of the rec committees and do one motion to accept all of the reports of the rec committees. We can still talk about each one individually, but do them all one. And the same with conservation authorities. Mm -hmm. Instead of a separate motion for each one, it would be a consent motion to approve all three um, conservation authorities. You lump all them together? You yeah. lump them all together, like, I mean, but the they're separate. And yeah. the rec committee, like all those yeah. committees and reports. Yeah, you could, yeah. yeah. You, you could, could do put all the reports together. together. I think the county puts all reports together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and bylaws too. It's quite often done with uh, yes. bylaws if you've got several bylaws. Do them all at the end. All at the end. Okay, so that's what we are doing Proposal. with the procedural bylaw. That's a change, right? Yes. yes. And everyone's good with that. 
We'll give it a try. If it doesn't work, we change the procedural bylaw. That's simple. Okay, rules of order. Uh, Robert's rules of order, more widely understood. We always yeah. need to go to the paper when there's a question. <laughs> uh, voting and virtual participation. Currently, members who attend virtually do not get the opportunity to show how they vote. There's currently no practice established to ensure virtual members can speak to a matter. So what do we want to do with that? I think that we can verbally ask people that are virtually, so not to put more work on you or a chair, that when somebody is virtual and we have a vote, you say, Nikki, how do you vote? And they have to physically say their vote. Say and but I think if you're going to be virtual, you can't just be on the phone. Like Cindy calls in on the phone. She's up there. And, and if I don't see a face, I never think to ask. So I think you have to be present on the Zoom as well as having video and audio. But sometimes you don't have enough use in your phone because you're in a dead area and you can't do virtual because your phone won't connect to do virtual. Most people do it on their computer instead of their phone though. Or well, even the iPad, it's the same yeah. thing. Because mm -hmm. you're getting your Wi-Fi through your phone mm -hmm. to run your iPad, so you're not gonna have enough juice to do it. If you're in a location and yeah. can't get it for your phone, your yeah, it depends on where you are, I guess. Yeah. But for as a chair, if I don't see your face on that screen, as the meeting goes along, I forget to ask. So right now, the wording that we have in there right now um, in 7.2 says the chair shall ensure members attending virtually have their intentions noted. So that was added. And then I just want to go to 7.6. Each yeah, members attending virtually shall raise their hand if they wish to speak. The clerk or meeting host will then notify the chair, and priority to speak will be given to members attending in person over members attending virtually. That's good. Then at least I, I will see something on the screen that I'll know that somebody wants to say something. The only issue with that is if the way it's worded is shall raise their hand uh, as a, and that, if you're on your phone you can't do that as he, well you can't um but you start, start, yeah, start, start yeah. Or something. yeah and what number was that you're talking about that's uh, still still on voting and virtual um, seven. so seven point six h and i so page 10 h and i okay yeah so that was that would work though uh because if you're on the phone you can raise your hand or if you're virtual you can physically raise your hand that I can see you, right? Yeah, if you're... And I know it says, I think I read it, that it says that you have to verify that the person is who the person is. Mm -hmm. If you're on the phone. If you're on the phone. So to fix that is you could email a pass code or a password to that person so they can verify at the meeting when the meeting starts, this is Cindy and my pass code is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, kind of thing. I don't know how it has to set up. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. if you're on the phone, you can't really How so, you verify. Yeah, so yeah, and I guess that's so normally for, for counselors, I send a panelist invite. Yeah. Okay. And so you quite often just join through the regular link as opposed to the panelists. When you come in as panelists, then it's it's identified with your contact information. Um, okay. But if I just get a list of phone numbers on on the participants, I don't necessarily know no, who's no. who and who, yeah. It's so member of the public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I usually just look at the link you send me, so I don't know what the difference is. But if you, well, she goes through that link. I go through that link. To, to the, to the panelist one? Well, whatever the email is that you send me, you can do Zoom or you can do phone. So I call in the number that's in the email that everyone receives. And so sometimes you come in as a panelist, other times you come in as a participant. So that must so, be a glitch, because yeah. I always do it the same way as if I was doing Zoom at home on my computer. Yeah. Okay. So be, yeah, you need to be a hunter then. Okay. Not so, a participant. We need to as, long as, as, long as, you, as long as the chair can see that you want to talk, if I don't see, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm good at that. <laughs> well, it's really adjustments. I mean, we, you know, more work for you, maybe Cindy, but um, you kind of identified for this. Hey, so and so is on the line and has. So I mean, it could be Kathy mm -hmm. or you as a deputy clerk can identify. It's kind of mm -hmm. the brand. Someone's looking yeah. to talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because sometimes we, I know, because I'm sitting up my friend. I can't. You can't see it. They got the screen there. You can't tell who's. Sometimes we've missed it. Even I've missed it. 
If you put your hand up, though, it's a big red, you yes. yellow box. Yeah, but I'll yes, just see the hand come up. Okay, <laughs> so talk. one by yeah. six. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We've got that organized. All right, so page 12, additional oh, requirements. Before we move Sorry. off of this, I'm wondering since uh, we also have blue, uh, green, oh, or whatever yeah, you want to call that. That's the blue things. Again. Uh, that's right, gonna... I think those were Jody had flagged were things that certain counselors had asked for um, either changes or additions. So while we're on here, do we want to look at sure, all right, every member? Yes, yeah, so does every right. member of council or committee still have up to two opportunities <laughs> to speak for or against a matter or motion under consideration? That doesn't reflect our actual practice, though. No. Right. And I think everybody needs to be heard. Robert's so, rules does say you can speak twice. And if you speak three times, it's at the chair's pleasure, I believe, is what Robert's rules say. I didn't bring Robert's rules. Um, and that's why it's stated like that. Yeah. So under because that's new, because that wasn't in our spin. No, I I was don't it? know. I think it I think that was uh, is it there? I'd is... have to look and see. I don't know if that was a change or not. I would suggest we don't follow it. No. Well, closely. Madam Mayor, Robert's rules also say that the chair gets the last word. Yeah. When she's spoken, it's over. That's right. <laughs> so yeah. um, the committee as a whole is what the county uses. Uh, so what happens is Ron starts the meeting, um, a formal regular rules meeting. Then we go into the committee as a whole. I take the chair as deputy. And in the committee as a whole, you can talk to the issue as many times as the yeah. chair lets you talk to the issue. And the chair doesn't have really any number that they can stop someone. I can't say you, you've spoken twice, that's it. Mm -hmm. So you let it go until pretty much it sounds like there's been some consensus and then you call the vote. And, but the vote in committee of the whole is just a recommendation. It then has to be um, solidified oh, by the, by council. So it's it's a different system. Different system. Susan. Well, uh, you have 7.6G, which allows you to extend the time limit if a majority of the council by a show of hands right. agree you could also do it for more opportunities to speak because when I was reading this I thought okay well our council really gets along we're very respectful of each other and everybody has an opportunity to speak and we don't get too upset but what if there was someone who was very loud and monopolized the that uh, hammer that I've got that's what that's for. <laughs> yes, but they can still be very difficult to handle. And that's when I looked at this, I thought, oh, that must be why you're limiting us to five minutes and, and two opportunities to speak. Five minutes, that's 10 minutes. That's the same as a delegation. Well, and in fact, too, that the, the two times to speak is if you present your feelings on an issue and then Craig presents them and somebody else presents them, your second speaking is to agree or disagree with what's been said or to make your argument again to sway it in, in the way you want it to go. So that's that's the, the two, that's why the two things. Because really you could go all night with back and forth, back and forth, everybody trying to present what, what they think the right decision would be. So I think one option, if you wanted to limit the number of opportunities to speak in the in the code or in the bylaw, pardon me, would be to to give discretion to give further opportunities to speak, just like you do to further time. Just what does what does Robert's rules say? Because I thought that's where that was. I don't know. I have to look. I, I think that's where it came from. Yeah. yeah. On the shelf at home. <laughs> I don't have a book. <laughs> I don't think I have one either. I do. have one at the office. Yeah, one at the office. That's right. Not with us. Okay. Can we park that one, Susan, as a possibility? Sure. It's uh, Nikki raised the, the issue. So I was just giving some opportunity. And I agree. I like your office at the discretion. I like those words. Mm -hmm. The only problem as chair is if I give that discretion to Susan, I have to give it to Philip and Dan and everybody. And then there's there's a point where the chair will say there are no more options. Mm -hmm. So I think whatever we write in there, maybe it says one option for one further comment. But I think I think there, I think it's written for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
to B2. Let's investigate that a little more. We're pretty flexible. I uh, I know we've certainly said more than one or two comments, but we could get called on it. <laughs> if somebody wanted to call us on it. Okay, so we're going to find out a little bit more about that one. All right. The next one was uh, page 12. Uh, a maximum a maximum time limit of five minutes. Well, but the word you have a, another one. There's another one in blue. Here. Yeah, yeah. We'll a maximum. It may be imposed. Well, well, that's right. That's right. Have, or maybe there's one here. You've got Notwithstanding this as as statement, a candidate for deputy mayor may be appointed for consecutive years throughout the term of council. Well, I'm, I'm just following the pages. That's all. I'm no, doing. maybe I'm doing. The king of this is where there should be no time limit. A maximum of five. A time of five minutes per I mean, opportunity for each may be imposed by the chair to limit the time allotted for any speech. We now have yeah. 10 minutes, I believe, for each speaker. Oh my God. You mean somebody this coming is, to present? No, that's oh, no. different. No, this is council. Oh, this council, council to speak. But yeah. we have two opportunities to speak, total yeah. of five minutes each, which right. adds up to 10 minutes. Sorry, five minutes per yes. page. And so if you've got a really long winded counselor, you, you've got a measure of so I can time you, Susan, if you want, and then I can do this procedural issue matter. What we're saying is important there. It's if it seems to be Maybe going on yeah. far too long, then you have the option to say, okay, we wrap it up now. That's that button on it. Yeah, just say, you got 10 seconds. <laughs> well, and and I do that often with the presenter. Is that you're getting close to your they ten get ten, minutes? They have yeah. ten minutes. Yes. So we don't need to change that. That's the I think it's in there because that word is in there. May mm -hmm. yeah, I, it changes it. Okay. All right. So what's next in color? I don't have a color. <laughs> um, Seven fourteen, wasn't it? Oh, I've got that. Addition, <laughs> addition of a requirement to silence device as well. You I've been that. adding that now at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that that works yes. for myself included. Yes. Yeah. It's really nice mean, to have the reminder. Yeah, it is. Because right. right. yeah. a lot of people just forget because they have it and they just don't even think yeah. about it. Can you give a reminder for us to turn the sound back on at the end? <laughs> yeah, that's probably <laughs> hours later. I think, no, I haven't got any messages at all. And then I look at my phone. Uh oh, I could try to do that. I can put it under adjournment on my coffee and see if I can remember. Philip, Philip, you can hand up. Sir, when I've been going through this, I think uh, if you look at 7.10, it references. It references a wrong paragraph. So there's a reference back to a previous paragraph. Oh, a 7.8? It says it says something that's oh yeah above the affirmative seven point eight e when they think it really should be referencing back to seven point nine. Okay. Speak when they have been recognized by the chairman. Yeah, I think that's something Jody indicated that once we have everything sort of in place, we will do definitely do a cross-reference check as things have to moved around the okay. somewhat so yeah but thank you 7.12 yes okay <laughs> okay fair right. we'll check those are we at page 13 now or is there a color uh well, what's next appointments um, are next right appointment process yeah. simplify the method by which council elects the deputy mayor and second county council representative how do we simplify it so okay before we go now. to that one there is a blue oh uh one up here. That, yeah um, what was it top a of the page a, a. 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 Deputy Mayor appointment. Notwithstanding this statement, a candidate for deputy mayor may be appointed for consecutive years throughout the term of council. Okay. So that's uh, that's a suggestion. Yeah, suggest that deputy mayor may, may no that's that was what was the text was not uh, the suggestion from Councillor Dowdy was that the deputy mayor be selected yearly from each district, district. and each district shall have a year of representation per term, as opposed to just a, having Ask. an election each year. But that, that no. would be a more structured process where it would go oh, through so the boards. What are you saying? So we know which area is going to do it? Yes, and so that every area gets a turn. So if, say, Philip decides, I want to do it for another year, and I'm going to keep it, then one other district will not have a turn. We never let him do that. We just say we're going to elect a new Tom's done a Tom's in a row. 
Oh, Tom, did somebody, somebody do it? But yeah. it's, Tom it's still a vote. Yeah, for the because county nobody or else. for no, for no, deputy for mayor. Deputy deputy mayor. mayor. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Which so I happened. think that was because, because nobody, nobody else wanted yeah. it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's a tough job, isn't it, Philip? I've been told I've uh, doing a great job. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, good job, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is nice to give. Is that what you meant to say? <laughs> my, and, my biggest and duty it, was to adjourn a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I was sick. You had to you know, take over a few more me. It is but, nice to have each area have the opportunity. It is, yeah. Everything. And if that area did always want to do that, was good. Back back to you. You. And it speaks yeah. to that inclusivity, you know. Yeah. <laughs> No, so we've I mean, always we, tried to move it around and give everybody an uh, experience to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Go, yeah. We want to set out sort of like a, 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 district a, or a schedule. So first year would be district one, second year would be district two, or how are we going to choose which district, district to take next. each? Yeah. I, I think it depends on the member. Like what if what yeah. if we say it's district two and nobody's able yeah. to do it in district two that year, Yeah. but the next year yeah. they'd be able to. I think you just have to leave it open. And I think so like, yeah. and then just Hinch and Brooks on their year. turn. Yeah. The and next then, time it'd be they Hinch and Brooks still votes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. set out an order of the things that there might right be a year where so, so, Oso's yeah. turn to have yeah. one, and there's yeah. both something going on in mine and Susie's life that you yeah, don't want the extra responsibility it. and Bill sitting there saying, I'd love to do it this year because I just got rid of the dump business and I got lots of time. Well, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian, that's what you know, be years away. Also, I give you time. <laughs> If if I do become the warden of the county, whoever is the deputy yep. that year will have more work than the deputies mm -hmm. in the years that mm -hmm. I'm not warden because mm -hmm. I'm That's right to mm -hmm. fix it more than opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Susie. <laughs> if I do, I say, <laughs> oh, you may change your mind. Yeah. Oh, we'll never know. <laughs> All right, so we've got that way. Yeah, so we'll okay. put some wording there. For there. Mm -hmm. And now we are at voting. Voting. Now wait a minute. Eight point three appointment process. We we missed voting. Okay, vacant position declared. Page thirteen. Eight point five. Eight. Not no, colored. Eight point three. No. It's eight point three B. Vacant position. No. Oh, no. well, why is it on this chart? Well, you we haven't got. We're to not on. Yet. We haven't We're got on the it. chart though. I've been, I gave up on the chart. I started, yeah, we're just going to finish the, the highlights chart. chart. You can look at my, I need, I need something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't leave this without the paperwork. But you don't have to share right. it. I don't have another one. So where are we? Right here. Yeah, we're, right. Down here. we're down here. Okay, yeah. so. The voting. Voting. We'll vote those yeah. nominated yeah. in an open manner. So the clerk tallies the votes. What's changed here? Anything? I think this is. As it was before, and we were just concerned that it was somewhat complicated. A nominee may vote for themselves. <laughs> Members can only vote for one nominee. The nominees that receive the majority support of council will continue in the process. Mm -hmm. If only one nominee receives the majority support, the nominee will be declared the deputy mayor. I don't think we've ever had. It's, it's the second round of voting that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we don't want to do it. I think we're going to vote for it. Well, that's why you're saying one. There's the there's the second round. Yeah, it's got to be where they're because they're not just using the last sub five. It said two or more nominees receive the majority support of council. There'll be a second round of voting. And I'm just I'm having trouble conceptualizing when you would have two or more nominees receiving a majority support of council. In round one voting. Well, it would be a would tie. Would you call the tie? Yeah. <laughs> four, four. It's still a majority. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, there was, you could. But there's but nine. Just, so the second we said it could mm -hmm. be only well, two. Well, we did have for committee that. appointment. There was a tie. Mayor, so. I think there Speaking of that, that it's reminds this, me. Can we take off the website that we're still looking for community, committee members? I think we should have our committees. No, waste management sure. doesn't. Also, doesn't. It was never on we'll the front page. We'll take people on the OSO committee. You don't have an I don't, And what's, oh. what's oh. happening with seniors' housing? Then maybe we need to do it specific. Yes, I have a hold of the committees that we still yeah. need. Yeah. 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 Yes. Or put a generic thing out there. We're always looking for volunteers. We have generic for committees. We have that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I'm just saying if, if a, there's take a lot of the committees that are filled, 
take it off the ribbon going across yeah. that pops up. Leave it on the page where it says we have we look for volunteers on all these committees. Mm -hmm. But the ribbon that goes across, it comes up, and then the volunteer firefighters yeah. next, and a special meeting. Like that's, I think mm -hmm. this might yeah. be a good suggestion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but really leave good. it there on the main the page for volunteers. Sorry, I got us off topic because now we're on second round of voting. Can we not just make it a simple vote? You know, yeah. I, I don't understand why it's even unless there's a tie, yeah. deal with the tie. But other yeah. if in the old days, if there was a tie, you threw the names in the hat, you pulled it out, and that person was the dead. <laughs> you can't. But if you just went back to the one we just talked about before, and if deputy mayor's mm -hmm. going to be from each ward, then there's not going to be a tie because right. there's only going to be two people running, and there's nine voters. Yeah. Unless somebody doesn't vote. But, but if, if you don't I, vote, it's considered. I know that's a no. Yeah, that's a good point. I think we leave this for somebody four years from now because we all get along too good. To even <laughs> <on this issue. laughs> the majority is the winner. <laughs> I would prefer that. I because uh, to be honest well, with you, I I, I, would, I wouldn't know how to run the second way. round of voting. Yeah, yeah. get rid of it. It's, it's, really happen. it's never happened. happened that I know we had second round of voting, but no, let's get rid of it. We don't okay. Need it. All right. Get, get rid of it with a line through it, but leave it in there just in case someday you do need it. You no, have reference throw, to the back. Throw it, throw it in the room in the trash. We all have all right. All eight point four. <laughs> now you're down at eight point five. Five. Point five now. Oh, I've got that on my sheet, my list. Vacant position provide more options as set out in the act to appoint elect mm -hmm. new yeah. member of council yeah. if a position yeah. becomes yeah. vacant. Yeah. Uh, by election, appointment yeah. for municipal election candidates, qualified candidates, appointment by call for applications or direct appointment by council. I will tell you, a lot of this depends on what time of the term it happens. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. yes. If it happens in the last 10 months, we just appoint. We, we usually have appoint. Appoint. We have in the past appointed somebody yeah, who's been on the board. last time. Yes. Yeah. 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 But if it happened in the first year, a by election would make sense. Except mm -hmm. a by election is very expensive. Very, very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think Rita Lakes is going through a by election right now. There's yeah. a bunch of election signs over there, anyhow. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I know that the previous version, I think, had was different and it mm -hmm. only only contemplated an appointment. Appointment, yes. Um, and and I think we changed it back to the four options. So we just wanted to make Good sure that the council was okay with those four options as opposed to just going with the appointment. Yeah, because we just had an appointment because that's what you had. Yeah, that's what the council said done at the time. Well, uh, and I think the municipal act is much says those four options. Yes. yes. So, that's why yeah, so this is mirroring the, the municipal act requirements. Yes. yes. So we leave it in. Yeah, we, we all know that we're just... going to find the cheapest way to do it. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll take those and just on here. Okay. So, and then I'll give you the next one. All right. <laughs> so, 8.5 electronic council meetings. 9.2. No. Yeah. 9.2. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, here you got two pages. Those on two pages. Okay. Well, my little chart says rules updated to mirror the committee of yes. adjustment procedural bylaw. Yes. This section also sets out when many meetings must be streamed and how long the recording will be available. Right? So okay. this is it. Well, every effort shall be made by members to attend meetings, da -da 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 -da. Uh, at least three hours prior to the start of the meeting in certain circumstances, including but not limited to medical reasons, poor road conditions, scheduling conflicts, uh, declaration of state of emergency, absence, from the area due to work, vacation, or bereavement. Madam Mayor, I don't <laughs> see blown up transmissions in that. <laughs> uh, poor car conditions. <laughs> Add it to the road condition one. <laughs> it's a scheduling conflict because the transmission wouldn't let you get there. <laughs> so everybody okay with that wording? Because mm -hmm. it's including but not limited to, so it can include other, yeah. other yeah. things as well. So, yeah. Please note, closed session participation shall be either in person only or electronic. Yeah. Hybrid participation is prohibited. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't agree with that one because we've had closed sessions where we've called on the phone and set, let the members be involved in closed session. So I think that that mm -hmm. should be allowed. It's dangerous. You mm -hmm. can't you can't secure a link no. necessarily. So I just had my Mississippi conservation one 
and we had a closed session and they let people participate in closed session that are virtual. I, I think the reason why we yeah. worded that is because if we're doing it in the hall, we have to use the microphone oh, systems and, and yeah. traditionally you've never used the microphones oh, for closed yeah. sessions. So there's the right. that. So if there's another way to do it, um, or another way that you're not using those microphones, then then I think that's the security issue, not so much the meeting platform, because we can certainly set up a separate meeting for closed session and deal with it. It's just, I think the concern it's was a, with the, the, the sound system. So can you hear the sound system outside of the hall or is it just yeah. your no, you can hear it outside the kitchen? The hall. No, you can hear it outside. You the can hall. hear it verbally. I, I would suggest you can hear us just talking outside the hall. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Do you think probably. So? I think so. Yeah. Maybe with all the windows. Especially in the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the only good thing about being in the kitchen is you hear the conversation, but you don't see the face of the person. Uh, okay. <laughs> I really think there should be a radio in the kitchen when we have the closed session so that the That's radio is on and then you don't hear the closed session. You'd have to <laughs> bolt it down, but we can probably find one. <laughs> Bill, did you have your hand up as well? Well, it, it was kind of similar. It's like, you yeah. know, we were, we were doing closed as an entire group uh, when we were all doing virtual, so I didn't quite understand why. If, one or two members had to join virtually, it was such a big deal. But yeah, it's it's, it's the microphone. Microphones. Now we can try to have the person stay on and not use the mics, but the, the sound is bad. They won't hear us. But we don't use the mics in closed session. No, no but you can't hear that if somebody's doing virtual, they wouldn't hear us. You'd have to yell. And Are you sure? Have we tested it that way? That you can't hear when you're virtual if the mics aren't on? Well, when our mics didn't work a couple of weeks ago in our open yep. council meeting um Boyd was watching at home and it, it just it. suddenly it was just silent yeah hmm. and if 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 you can really really yell loud that you might pick up well, the turn the lights, lights on but not yeah, yeah, but that, yeah. <laughs> during that covid the person, the person. you were doing everything online by Zoom, yeah. Yeah, everybody was on Zoom. Though. Yeah, so everybody was here through the Zoom. Yeah, I imagine. That's yeah. why. Like, I think, so if all I think what we need yeah. to, to do yeah. is qualify that statement to say that hybrid participation is not allowed in a situation that we're at the hall needing a sound system or something to that effect. Because th there could be times when, like, we are only having a virtual meeting. Mm -hmm. So, you might in, be in which to... case, um, or if you were having a closed session here. Nobody's going to hear. Yeah, we were having a meeting, but we're on we're on YouTube. Yeah, but that's all. Yeah, we're but we would yeah. we, yeah, we, we would shut that off. Right, close if we yeah. were having a meeting here. Then so maybe we need to qualify that. Yeah, I yes. think what we need to and the other thing is knowing in advance whether or not because that has to like you have to set up a separate meeting for that as yeah. well. So doing that on the fly is really challenging. So if we know in advance and if we have some workaround for the not needing the sound system, then I think. It's, it's, I don't see any reason not to do it. It's just the, yeah, it's the, the logistics to get it right at the hall. Way. Yeah. But the very best is to be at the table for sure, especially yeah. for closed stuff because it's mm -hmm. usually personnel or lawyers or something. Mm -hmm. not so good. can you put like every, everything will be done to make sure that we can, if you can participate in closed session, but if it can't be done properly in a, Professional night that it won't be done. Is there something like that you could do? That's city's going to work real, on those that terms, kind of wording. Terms, yeah. You just call somebody's phone and one speaker. That's what we've done in the past. Oh, okay. that's an idea. On my phone, I'll just we've put up Brent, speaker. You Brent can hear everybody. You can hear yeah, everybody and talk through my phone if you want to comment and look at us on the TV. That's true too. Yeah, <laughs> that might be something you could put in there. And then the, the only concern with that is whether, you, like, do we know that that person's yeah. in a in a quiet in an area that nobody else can be well as a counselor you're supposed to be professional and that's part of your job to make sure that you are that so mm -hmm. in the quote context. but in your case in when context. you're at work somebody no, walks in in the middle of a discussion yeah. about a personnel issue it, it's not worth no. taking the risk mm -hmm. it really isn't no, because then you get the, the we get the integrity commissioner and there'll be you know, things coming in because somebody just has to complain it's a, it's a small enough town when we do things wrong. <laughs> okay, what what is the next one? Is that enough on that one? So, um, are, is everybody comfortable with C in terms of recording the votes? Votes, chair asking. Yes. 
when you may take place by way of show of hands or method authorized by the chair, ensuring that members in public are aware how each member votes. Now, is that the raise the hand? Yes. So yeah. if if your birth this is electronic, yeah. yeah. You ask the person yeah. how, how they're going voting. to vote yes or no often is what I do. Yeah. Are you yeah. voting yes or no to the motion? So they speak what their That's mm -hmm. what they intentions are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, show our hands or alternative or method. method. Yeah. I think the key there is to know whether so the public's aware of how each member votes. Yeah. Yes. And I think there's a tendency to like if for anyone who is attending virtually to sort of forget to check to see whether they've, you know, how they're voting. And and so mm -hmm. I think some kind of formal acknowledgement of anyone virtual is, is important. So we can sort of make sure that. You know, if, if they're the deciding vote, no or yes. Yes or no, you need to know. Yeah. yeah. So that's okay. So with the Madam Mayor, can so I that's ask what it? we'll do. We'll we'll ask either for a show of the hand or a yes or no. And if you're on the phone and we can't do the hand thing, then I would Same ask yes. yes or no. Oh, that makes it complicated. Cindy, you'll just have to unmute me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What well, uh, D is fine. And he is fine. That recording shall then be made available by yes. Central Facebook YouTube website. Mm -hmm. right. okay. it it held for six months. Yeah, we hold it for six months. All right. What's next? Here. Oh, oh yeah, more pages to come. Nine three, nine three. There's a pair. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is going to be. Hey, I think it's nine point five. Yeah, committee minutes. Yes. Reminder that committee minutes need to come to council and how to deal with action items. Minutes shall be included in the agenda of council as information. Any action items requiring council approval will be presented in the form of a motion to council. Community members shall be appointed by council. What, what does that That's mean? That's committees. Okay. This is all dealing with committees. What, what does what mean, Phil? So, Items requiring council approval will be presented in the form of a recommended motion to council. So the committee's making a motion recommending something to council. I, I just don't understand what motion we're asking for. Is council mm -hmm. doing a motion or is the committee doing a motion? No. So for example, if if there's a committee that wants to um, um, authorize a grant or um, suggest to council that they take a certain action. That they that would, in their minutes, they the the committee would pass a motion in their to minutes recommend to recommend that council, council take certain action or do something or whatever, or allow something, and then so that those would be reflected in the minutes. So who's pulling those out of the minutes and the council needs to do something with it? That's a good question. Because mm -hmm. that's where we miss things now. Wouldn't that be the council rep on mm -hmm. the committee? Yeah. Well, I was council going to say, what in the case if it's a it's a comes in a manager's report. And that does happen from time to time. Yeah, because well. like yeah. waste management committee would also go through public works. Yeah. So well, typically what I at least I'm not sure how Tyson works it, but what I try to do is is if I have a, a report that is bringing a motion from a committee, I'll I'll attach the minutes to my report, mm -hmm. even if they're in draft form, just to say the draft minutes, here's the motion that was passed by the committee. And then explain in my report while I'm bringing it forward. So that's sort of an alternative way to, to do it. Some need staff reports, some don't. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because that way then they have to come so that we can put that through on a motion for council to accept. Because it's the same with grant applications and all that. That's got to be applied through from us. So, mm -hmm. you know, the committee may be doing stuff, but send it to us so that we can get council can improve it. And I think we, I think but that, know, historically we ran into some trouble yes. with some of the rec committees because there was some subcommittees that the yeah. were, I don't know if they were making decisions without the rec committee. I, mean, I, I don't know. There was just a sort of go back to Chris's chain of command thing. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> so and we it got were just confusing. confused about whether the rec committee was actually authorizing the subcommittee's um, recommendations yeah, and stuff. So yeah, have, might as well just say the Sherbert Lake Rain Committee. No, <laughs> Get it on the table. <laughs> well, at least we got a ring shot. Okay, we might not have followed all the rules, but the ring shot. Prime example was the uh, no, no, snowshoe no, trails. No. Yeah, what, what is, I, 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 I'm reading this different than you guys. 
I think what the solution <laughs> is, is the minutes would lay out specifically a motion that says that the committee da -da -da -da, recommend to council that we da -da 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 -da. that goes in the minutes. The councillor who sits on that committee makes sure that Cindy sees that to get it on the agenda. That's kind oh, of a motion. Is, yeah. that, is that not the simplest way yeah. to do it? Yeah. Yeah. But, but, yep. The way I read this is the minutes go to council for information. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And then stop it there. Then any action items requiring council approval will be presented in the form of a recommendation motion to council. Mm -hmm. So also rec to me, I'm on. We have our minutes, we pass motions to do whatever. Our committee sees us or heard of this grant thing, or we want money from the township that we don't have, our rec committee would come to a presentation to council. And they can, they they can. can. right? They can. But to ask. you wouldn't have to if you follow this. You would you would do a motion saying what you want council to consider, and it would be in the minutes that come in. Cindy would see those in the minutes because they're going to be bolded and in parentheses and mm -hmm highlighted and you will make sure that Cindy gets that on the agenda. But does that not go into to the central front and that recreation committee? Once mm -hmm. we get that motion could, moving. Could it not be a notice to motion by the chair with the minutes attached? No. I we gotta get away so. from no. these notices okay. of motions. <laughs> well it just just it's committee it's a committee it's recommendation. A committee. Yeah. 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 But then the word motion is still in there. So that's the... How about just forget motion to council, uh, just that the, the committee... To make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. a recommendation to council. Mm -hmm. And then Cindy will develop the motion that... Compared to what be... they got on their, mm -hmm. on their minutes, right? Yeah. That's yeah. what it's mm -hmm. for. And then when we get the central front and correct going... You're going to be things are going to flow through them, and then that report will come to, to big council. things, mm -hmm. but not little things. Mm -hmm. If there's yeah. little things that come direct, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way we think it's going to go. Yes. All right, we got that one. So committee community members shall be appointed by council. Yeah, that that's pretty. Nice. Now, is that for every committee? <laughs> like on your rec committee, you want everything to come through council. Everything yeah. well, like, I because the your minutes. Once we get things reorganized, it'll be the the central front neck rec the committee, committee will be the one. is the committee that is the committee. Yeah, and so the sub, sub the yeah the rec yes. committees okay. within the sub committees, and then they would have more flexibility because okay. I think because there's they a lot and of come and go, right? Yes. So we don't want that. That's, that's, structure. I just wanted to clarify that. The only thing we need is certainly is the list of the of the committee yes, members for insurance and stuff like that. Okay, nine point six. Agency boards and commissions. The members appointed to an agency board or commission shall provide any approved minutes or verbal report on the board or commission for any meetings held. Do we have commissions? We don't. We don't. Um, and really, I think that really only applies to um, conservation, conservation, conservation authorities. authorities. And, and we do now get those minutes quite regularly. So those, um, we don't necessarily need a verbal report if we have the, the um, the written ones. The what ones that we never ever get brought to council is the Park Arena board. Uh, in my five years, I have never seen minutes from Park Arena. No, that's fair. That's what we were talking about. Yes. <laughs> Can you get us minutes? Yes. Yeah, because I never. Would you get us minutes, please? Or like a, or a, a verbal report or something. Yeah. A verbal, verbal report. report. There you go. Would you like a 20-minute report? No. Oh. No. Thank you. <laughs> You're not fine. How much more do you want to do? You're only allowed five minutes. <laughs> I need to get five minutes. Okay. We've got 523. Okay. Right, so, yeah, we're making it. All right. So this right. is 9.7 closed session number C. Oh, we're down we already talked about this. Did we? Kind of a repeat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it? Okay. So let's leave it there. So, so right. We've talked about stuff being heard in the kitchen outside the hall. Did I? Well, so that shall be in the desserts only. And open. there's cookies oh, in there. Okay. In the kitchen. So we're thinking of participation of closed sessions shall be in, in person only and saying electronic hybrid in person electronic participation is a, 
of the word. And they just sort of work seven. on the wording that we used in the other one, put in that one. Okay. Okay. Then we'll look at that. All right. 19. Page and get that occurrence or an emergency situation will prevent attendance at a meeting. The mayor may direct the clerk to postpone that meeting by con contacting as many members as possible or change to a virtual meeting subject to a 9.2 as an alternative to a postponement. So if we have a big <coughs> snowstorm, yeah. then I would contact all that, you know, or if there's an emergency, I think we've done this you direct and you, we postpone the meeting or we go by virtual. Yeah. So before it read that it would just be postponed. It, it didn't have that option oh, to oh, go oh, okay. hybrid. So we're just making sure that that we got that. Okay. All right. I've got 10.3, 10.4, 10.5, 10.6, 10.7, 10.8, 10.9, 10.10, 10.11, 10.12, 10.13, 10.14, 10.15, 10.16, 10.17, 10.18, 10.19, 10.20, 10.21, 10.22, 10.23, 10.24, 
Anyway, discussion for another day. There will be a report. Let's deal with this because I think we've got all oh, five or eight minutes left. Um, so we did talk about the consent agenda, and everybody was willing to try it. Mm -hmm. So that just solved that one. I'm glad we moved delegations right. up after uh, the mayor's and remarks yes. on the agenda yes. so that we don't yeah. have to do it separately. Um, I hope I need 10.3. Uh, Next, yes. declaration of pecuniary interest. Added a note to confirm a pecuniary interest should be declared even if member not in attendance. Oh, How do you do that if you're not there? Oh, if you see it on the agenda, yeah, the you're agenda still right. packet to file the form with the clerk. Uh, yeah, you have to still file the clerk. Yeah. You know, and next in actual interest. fact, yeah. pecuniary interest is yeah. dollars. Yeah. But if you feel that it's just a relative conflict that you're not comfortable with, you can declare that as well. Yeah. But it is up to you, and it's not up to your fellow council members to tell you that you have a pecuniary interest. You have to do that on your own. Bill. It's not just dollars, it's the perceived, yeah. Yeah, the perceived which yeah. needs to be in there. Yeah. Well, but the act says it has to be a pecuniary, of pecuniary interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Personally, if it's perceived that it's a relative of mine, I'll declare a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it also does with conflict of interest. I, I have also a problem with if I think somebody has a pecuniary interest because of what I know, and they don't declare it, mm -hmm. the rules state that I can't say anything about it. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with that? You just contact the integrity commission. Yep. Yeah. Basically, you're reporting that person. Mm -hmm. You can report it to him. Again, as mayor, and it's probably not something I should do, but certainly with new folks, if I see it, and if I know of it, I would pull you aside and say, you might have a pecuniary interest. You might want to check. Just so you're aware mm -hmm. that you need to think about it. But because it's the word, not my responsibility yeah, to do that. There was a meeting where it was perceived pecuniary interest, and the person was adamant that it was not. But the vote was for a specific business that he was involved with. Well, that's definitely a perceived interest. You know, that's that's where I have an issue. If if I voted against Charbot Lake going to curbside pickup, mm -hmm. you wouldn't know if that's because I really believed it or because I'd be losing money. That's a perceived interest. Mm -hmm. So that's a perceived pecuniary interest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Susan. <laughs> Um, my comment was just, you know, we, we're not supposed to ask if we've got a conflict or, or whatever, but newbies yeah. did. I mean, with yes, the, yes, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. we got some directions. So. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. fair. And you also can call the integrity commissioner with your question. Mm -hmm. If you're, if it's a really important issue that you think you want to talk about, but you think you might have a pecuniary interest and he will give you guidance. The rule of thumb is if you think you have, declare it, mm -hmm. declare it yeah. and, and step aside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not worth the fines. Unless it's big and we don't deal with big bucks that we're going to make lots of money here. Okay, so that was all right. And 13.1, is that the last That's one? Bylaws? There's another no, one. 10K. 10 K. 10 and 4K. Nikki again, the CA number. Okay. okay, what is it? I don't have it. I just believe they're not going to, people aren't going to be happy if they're not heard. Like, yes, I have happy. the right. Yeah, under this, it says I have the right to decline a delegation that the matter can be resolved by staff because why should it take up council's time? Mm -hmm. It depends on what the issue is. Most cases, I don't decline anybody. No, I know but you there never is, have. But there is cases that there may be something that we can resolve. They're going to come to council and council is going to turn around and give it to staff anyway. And that's why I think that's is that in the municipal act that we can do that? I don't know if it's no, I don't know. No, I think that's just a, a that's a procedural bylaw. That's just under a procedural bylaw. Is that I think if you if you resolve it, so they've come to you as mm -hmm. the clerk and said, I want to go before council, and you're able to resolve it, then that kind of negates the need for them to come before council. Yeah, that's right. Resolves mm -hmm. can still be negative though. 
staff resolved it by saying no. So then they yeah. should be allowed to come to council. But if they come to council and council just send it back to staff, the staff yeah. that doesn't mean staff's going to change. Yeah, but at least they were heard. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's been that's right. been a problem okay. for years. That oh, nobody will listen to me. The staff just say no, 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 no. And mm -hmm. I want to come to council, and the staff are telling me no. So yeah. at least they've been staff. heard. Mm -hmm. You yes, staff. The go by what staff says. But you had your your five ten minutes to speak, mm -hmm. and they still might go away mad, but they were heard. Mm -hmm. It should have been around in the old days. Those were the meetings that went till one o'clock in the morning. Because everybody came to the table for everything. Mm -hmm. Potholes, fences, cows, horses. And I mean, I usually use that judgment is to look at it to see whether it is something that can be solved or resolved by staff. If it can't, by all means, they can come mm -hmm. to council and do their case and we'll go from there. So we just change the wording that it's favorably resolved yes. for the applicant. <laughs> it does say may decline. May decline. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that. It is going to but decline. maybe adding that if the matter can be satisfactory, satisfactorily resolved. Yeah, how's that? Yeah, there's right. no yeah. 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 satisfactorily resolved. That right. <laughs> well done. All right. right. Now we are at 13 white. No, no, not 11 adjournment. Point. <laughs> there are a hard lot today. Adjournment. 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 I'm it means we're getting to the end. We're getting to the end. end. Okay. okay. Adjournment. Rather than Nikki had suggestions. Uh, some suggestions. Sorry, which Ooh. number is there? 11.3. 11. 11. 11. Adjourn no later than 7 p.m. unless a motion to proceed beyond the time is approved by resolution, notwithstanding the section. No meetings shall proceed beyond 8 p.m. unless it's a meeting declared under an emergency. Disagree states it means may go later than eight. Um, we have to pass a motion to all the most procedural bonds have a, yes. a deadline. Yes, you have to have a deadline. If you're yep. starting at four and you're going to eight, four hours is Plenty. far more hours than you're going to make good decisions. Mm -hmm. But you need an end time. So that's why it's there. And, and I think it's wise. You just pass a motion to extend the deadline. No, I know. Because I mean, I think we've. The first done term out on council, it was, you know, the very first meeting, I think we extended it three times and it was quite late and we finally got to leave. <laughs> yeah. But I, my one recommendation was, do we have to have the times in there or can we say that our meetings, you know, can go up to three hours and then we could extend by one hour increments or something. Okay, that's your yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah. time. Because that, that could be, if we have a special council meeting at 11 in the morning for some reason, yeah, yeah. does yeah. that one have to be over by two or can that one go okay. or to five or the, our, our you know, it changing times? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Okay, now do we have 13.1? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take, take the limit off, right? So this, this says we were going to be done by a certain time. Yeah, this, yeah. this, yeah. this will just yeah. allow us to go and say, 13.1. Yeah. 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 I got that one. I lost. Clarify process of approving bylaws. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, that on, accepting a motion to approve a bylaw list on the agenda. The chair shall announce first, second, and third time. reading, pausing a third reading to determine if there are any questions or discussions by the members before putting final approval of the bylaws to a vote. I personally think we should have two motions to uh, oh, first, first, and second. first and second, and then a separate motion to do the third. Mm -hmm. But that's what we used to most do. Most of the one. motions we do, we have talked about quite a bit and things have been resolved. And if you haven't said your piece by that time, yeah. probably the hesitation yeah. for the third reading that isn't needed, but I'm good either way. And I don't think I pause after the second reading. We'll wait and see if anybody mm -hmm. has anything you to say the third. No. <laughs> So because that's the way we that used I to know do this is the yeah. rule, I could do that. <laughs> or oh, would you like nice. to change it? Would you like two separate motions? Or just have a pause. Or just have me pause. Kick me under the table if I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we'll pause. Okay, good. That's it. That's it. Look at that. Oh, Perfect. Oh. Cindy, did you get everything down? I don't know. <laughs> I think so. I mean, <laughs> I have a motion. It's probably more of it. We all get somewhere under here. Uh, I didn't take many notes. I was having to do that. Signed by Craig. The staff update the draft for the bylaw. Pursuant to the direction provided by council, and bring back the bylaw for consideration at the next council meeting. Can I make a suggestion that it won't be the next council meeting? No, it will be May, but it will 
May, what are we doing? At a May, future chemical future, meeting? Yeah, because I'm not even sure what the May done or not. I'm not sure. That's a future council meeting. Yeah. All those in favor? Here. That's good. <laughs> seconded by Craig. Hey, guys, let me show you. Oops. Move by Lynn, seconded by Craig. That bylaw 2023 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the special meeting held April 26, 2023, be read first, second, third, first, second, and third, third time. <laughs> and finally passed this 26th day of April 2023. And further, that this meeting to be adjourned until 4 p.m. May the 9th, my daughter's birthday, uh, said meeting to be held at Sorchis Memorial Hall, Charlotte Lake. Which All one? <laughs> Which daughter? Carrie. Oh, the end. Hold this. <laughs> Right, well, so, your birthday, you can have a meeting that brought you a proper order.